On this week's Gadget Show Web TV, John's getting domesticated with Samsung's latest robotic vacuum cleaner. I bring you this week's best tech news and run down the top five iPad apps. Hello and welcome to this week's Web TV. Right, later on I give you my top five iPad apps that I think you have to download. But first, John's doing a spot of spring cleaning with Samsung's latest Navabot automated vacuum cleaner. With its front-facing camera and multiple IR sensors, it's said to avoid obstacles better than ever. But does it clean up the opposition? Well, as ever, John's put it through its paces. <laughs> This is Samsung's new Navibot robotic vacuum cleaner. Now, as well as the normal sensors and rubber bumpers to help it navigate its way around, this has a camera on top that takes 30 photos every second and helps it build up a picture of your house as it goes around doing the cleaning. The result is, rather than a sort of random bounce around the room approach to robotic vacuum cleaning, it has a much more methodical strategy, so it'll start at the left or right-hand side of the room, gradually go across and complete it before moving on to the next one. It's really quite clever. It works automatically, so it'll do a whole floor of your house and decide when it's finished. It'll also return to its charging station automatically as well, either when it's decided it's finished or when it needs an extra dose of batteries. You can also control it manually using the remote control, and the top version comes with two bollards that you can use to fence off areas you don't want it to go to electronically. It's not clever enough to go up and down stairs, but it does have a sensor that detects sudden drops, so it'll halt at the top of the staircase. It's also got a built-in timer, which is quite useful because it is rather a noisy device to have on in the house while you're in. The big question is, though, does it do its cleaning properly? There are a few problems. You do need a very tidy house, I think. If, like me, you've got bundles of wires everywhere, it does tend to get stuck on them quite easily. It also, incidentally, got stuck on the skirting board and under an IKEA chair, which isn't really uh, terribly promising. Overall, though, it managed to work its way around each floor of the house in really quite a methodical fashion. And you can certainly tell where it had been, though there was a slight problem that it didn't pick up all the bits. I think even with these brushes spinning round to help, it doesn't manage to get everything into the rather small vacuuming aperture. It's also rather expensive, and as ever, you still need a conventional vacuum cleaner to get into smaller spaces or when you want to do a thorough clean. However, it is a very entertaining thing to have around the house, and it's certainly one of the more systematic robotic vacuum cleaners I've tried. Right, time for the news. And with 3D TVs now hitting the market, and with many exciting 3D announcements looking almost certain at the upcoming E3 Games Expo later this month, it looks like the camera market doesn't want to be left behind. As Nvidia have just announced that Sony's new Alpha Compact camera range will be compatible with its 3D image processing software. This follows Fujifilm's lead into the 3D camera market with the FinePix Real 3D W1, but this time Sony's camera will work in conjunction with Nvidia's 3D Vision Photo Viewer, so any snaps taken on an Alpha camera will be able to be processed in 3D using Nvidia's latest technology. With the 3D market growing, it looks like an obvious step for 3D to move into the amateur camera market, allowing users to take 3D snaps whilst they're on the move and then displaying them on their 3D-ready TVs at home. Now the iPad has been officially launched globally, more and more competing tablets are being announced, and Asus are no exception, as they've just unveiled their Windows 7 ePad tablet PC. It's due to ship with Intel's Core 2 Duo CULV processor, Windows 7, and an impressive 10-hour battery life. And in a similar fashion to the iPad, they're also offering a dock and keyboard as separate purchases for individuals who need a more productive way of typing out Word documents. It will also be capable of Skyping with its integrated webcam and, unlike the iPad, will feature at least one USB port. The machine is most likely to appeal to PC users who are familiar with the Windows operating system and for anyone not quite ready to jump into the Apple camp just yet. This range of ePads will be priced in the US between $399 and $499 and should be available in early 2011. I personally can't wait to see all the new pads hit the market to see what features they offer to threaten the iPad's crown. 
you were lucky enough to pick up one of these last week, you've no doubt spent your weekend reveling in its beauty and sleek design. But now that you've got it out of the box and transferred all of your music and photos onto it, you need to get stuck into the wealth of apps that are available. But with so many to choose from, it can be hard to decide what to splash your cash on. Well, luckily for you, I spent the last few days rummaging through the world of apps to find the ones that I think you can't live without. Since the iPad first launched in the US at the beginning of April, a huge market has developed for iPad exclusive apps, with over 3,000 hitting the App Store in the first few days after launch. This has included anything from the latest games to home medical diagnosis, but which are the best? In at number 5, it's Angry Birds. Now the original iPhone version had me hooked the minute I started to play and the iPad version is no different. With its intuitive controls, crystal sharp visuals and frustratingly addictive gameplay, anyone with an iPad would be crazy not to buy it. In at 4, it's the Kindle app, a great alternative to Apple's own iBooks. It offers over 375,000 titles direct to the app, including new releases and big sellers such as all of the Lord of the Rings and Twilight novels. The app is really simple to use. You just sign up and when you want to purchase a book, you click the Shop in Kindle Store tab and it'll take you directly to Amazon via Safari. Once there, you can search for the title that you desire. It'll bring up a list of available options. And you can simply click it buy it, download it straight to the app, and then you can enjoy your book using the iPad's glorious screen. In it three, we've got Twitterific. If, like me, you're a big fan of Twitter, then you'll like to keep up to date with all of your followers and let them know what you're up to. Now, there are a number of different iPhone Twitter apps out there that will allow you to do this, but they're a little bit restricted by their screen size. With Twitterific, however, you get this lovely large screen that allows you to see all of your followers, easily post a tweet and manage your account. It's set out for easy navigation, and what's more, it's completely free. And in it too, it's Apple's very own word processor, Pages. With Microsoft Word nowhere to be seen on the App Store, Pages is pretty much an essential purchase if you're looking to type out Word documents on your shiny new iPad. It comes with the standard word processor features including page layouts and spell checker and gives you full access to all of your photos to liven up those Word documents. It's also fully compatible with Microsoft's doc file format, so you'll have no problems transferring all of your files back and forth from your laptop. So at $5.99, it's a really great price. And in at number one, we've got something that's sure to keep the gainers amongst us happy. It's Mirror's Edge. Originally released on the Xbox 360, the game received lukewarm reviews, but this time the gameplay utilises the full capabilities of the iPad's touchscreen. With a quick swipe of your finger, you're off and running. Timing upward and downward swipes helps the main character leap over or duck under obstacles. You can defy gravity with wall runs, slide down zip lines and hop across exposed scaffolding with simple swipe sequences that just feel completely natural. Overall, this iPad version feels as if it's meant to be played in 2D. It loses almost all of the original Xbox frustrations and it becomes the game the iPad was built to play. That's it for today, but we'll be back at the same time next week. In the meantime, don't forget to check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for the latest Gadget Show gossip. So, see you next week.